When I think of the word nutrition, I think of this woman. Um, in fact, if there are there still dictionaries around or is it all on the ethernet? Because I expect to see her photo in the dictionary when I turn to nutrition. Um, she is an MS holistic nutritionist, an, uh, an author, a speaker. Um, uh, she is a, um, uh, as a soul nutritionist, is that it? What, what was that, body and soul? Yes. Yes. And today we have um, one of my top three favorite healers, uh, the person that I go to when my body isn't just right. And I've known, uh, I've known you for about 25 years now, and I'm going to just introduce her, Miss Sally Kravish. Sally oh, Kravish. Oh, yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I think it's been 25 years. Really has. Yes, so then good. when people used to call me Sally of the Valley exactly. uh, back in the days, you know, because I started this, I started my practice 33, 34 years ago, I think in LA. And it has seen, and people thought it was absolutely woo-woo in those days. <laughs> you know, I, I was the original juice and smoothie queen from right. like 1978 so when i was in the showbiz days i was drinking juices and i was putting people on diets on the side and then even back time, then oh yeah i was doing hands-on energy work and you know all of that uh one of the first persons i put on a diet was in 1976 when i was still on the donnie and marie show and then my husband ended up giving this particular person his first job on TV years later. It's like all this weird interconnected thing. But later I left showbiz and I, w I just went, I have to do this. This is my calling. This was always my passion. I was sick as a child from the t birth till about 12. We moved to Switzerland to study with naturopaths. I got well. And so, and my mother was into this. The, I, I started reading vitamin labels at age five. Really? And we lived all across the U.S. We lived in Europe. We lived in Canada. And everywhere I would go, I would look at the local lore or even the local plants because I'm also a master herbalist. And I just got into doing this early on. And I remember babysitting two little girls when I was 12 in Switzerland who had these horrible allergies. Uh, they couldn't even be in the same room as a nut or a bean or they'd blow up, you know. And I went, when I grow up, I'm going to help people <laughs> with this. And so that was in my head. Right. And yes, I had, you know, you know, no, others don't know as much that I had a showbiz life. Yeah. So I was doing this on the side until this is what took over. So fast forward, I ended up writing a book, uh, you know, in the 90s. I ended up having a bi-coastal practice between New York and L.A. starting in, I think it was 19... By 1995, so 25 years ago, mm -hmm. and then as my kids uh, grew up, when they were, you know, when they were younger, I was a single parent, so I couldn't um, split my time as much between New York and LA. So I was in LA, and then I, like every six weeks, I go to New York for a week and pack pack people in, and and then word got around, and I started being, you know, I, my advice was in other books and magazines, and I was on radio shows and talk shows, and and then I developed this equal practice between New York and LA. Right, so, right. And then uh, as my kids got older, I kind of focused even kind of, I was a bouncing ball between New York and LA, two weeks and two weeks, you know, but they were grown at that point. And then uh, when I met my husband who lived on the East Coast, I went, well, it's time to let one of my places go. So I let the LA go, not my profession and not my clients, but I let my living circumstances. And I went, I can just come into LA and see people in a hotel. So that's what I started to do. Right. right. And then uh, later, um, his business ended up uh, ending in New York. So I did the same thing in New York. So I'm kind of 
on the go around the I was I was on the go. I was until recently on the go go in right, hotels right. and I started virtual literally uh, four years ago when I let the New York apartment go. And it's great because you can speak to anybody. Here we are. You're in my you're in my office, darling. My and you're in mine. <laughs> and I'm in yours. How nice is that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now what now what shifted you from saying, you know what, I'm gonna do this full time? Well, I was one of those who had one of those me too experiences. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And and that was um the last film I did was Xanadu, but that's not what happened. I had some very close friends and f friend family, and 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 my I just my confidence was um, I couldn't trust. I I just didn't feel like I could trust, and I went. I need to be in control of my life. Yeah. I need to like follow my passion where I'm the leader. I I have self ownership. I can do what I'm doing and not have to ever feel compromised. And so that's kind of, that's why, that's why I left showbiz was there was this being compromised at this one point. And I also went, um, I really kind of like to direct and be the leader of doing things. And I had something to offer. I always go follow your passion, do what you love. And so there were aspects of showbiz that helps, especially when I was working with people in that i knew their lifestyle and all of that there's i knew how to make people look look and feel their best for mm -hmm. red carpet as well as how to uh navigate through long hours on you know sets and what kind of foods were at sets so there was an advantage to having been in that world yeah um there was an advantage because uh i'd also been a professional dancer and choreographer and ice skater and so i was an athlete so i knew about injuries and other things and uh that was kind of funny because i ended up being the keynote speaker for the professional skating association and they didn't even know I was an ice skater. I came in as a nutritionist. <laughs> and then you just put on your skates and started throwing pills you know, up. <laughs> you know, I was saying how to be your best, you know, yeah. like how do you be, how, how are people being their best? You know, because people used to do these starvation things and way too much sugar to go up and down and they're breaking their bodies down. So anyway, I was a forerunner in all of this, I was studying in 1963 in Switzerland with naturopaths, right? And then forward, and then and then even before then, I was, my mother knew things and I was reading labels. And so by the time, you know, late 70s go along, I was like already had all of this wealth of knowledge and certifications and different things. Yeah. So, and, and so, um, I moved into really doing that. I had something to say. Right, right. And I had, I had tools to teach, you know? There's something you mentioned. There was a word that you mentioned, which I'll, which I'll come to. But I'm going to throw out a word to you. And what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, okay. Addictions. Addictions. Ooh, I think we all have addictions to some level. You know, it's something that... Uh, whether it's something that brings comfort to someone or something or safety or um, or they're suppressing something so we can have kind of good addictions and not so good addictions you yeah. know yeah and so, one of the re and the reason I brought that up too was because you mentioned the word sugar and, yeah. and you and I both know that's my addiction which I yeah. have to stay away from yeah um, too much of a good thing. Well, it's not, it's not really good for the body, you know, because sugar breaks, sugar is highly acidic. It also, your body's quite something and its ability, its innate ability and wisdom to know how to take care of itself. Yeah. So if it's bombarded with something that's not great, say, let's take sugar or cookies, candy, you know, sodas, all of that, the body will do everything it can to save itself. And the great neutralizer of the acidity from sugar is calcium. And so where do we have calcium? We have it in our teeth, we have it in our bones. So we start breaking our bodies down to neutralize the acidity from sugar, from cavities to brittle bones, you know? 
And so, um, so, you know, for longevity, sometimes people are going, oh, you know, I've got, I, I'm told that I don't have the same bone mass that I had when, when I was younger. And I've been told, oh, I shouldn't take calcium or I had a blood test that shows I have too much calcium. Well, often that too much calcium is your body is in crisis and it's breaking down bones in your body to neutralize the acidity and so it shows up you have high calcium. Wow. So there are all kinds of, uh, so yeah, sh so that's one addiction. You know, alcohol's an addiction, cigarette smoke, suppressing food. Food can be addiction. I have, I've had clients who uh, would do some uh, really unusual addictions that I had never even heard of before. You know, like, like they were fooling themselves in some way. Oh, well, if I just chew this and spit it out, uh, I didn't eat it. Well, you had created another problem because now you're chewing so much, you got the digestive juices going and your stomach and your liver and your gallbladder and your pancreas think, oh, I got to break down something. And so instead there's acidity and then people will get a wash of it you know, acidity within. Anyway, I like to teach people how to take care of themselves. Yeah. And what's physically going on when you do something, because if you have more of an understanding, you might be more willing to create a shift, you know? Now, here, you were saying about taking care of yourself. And right now, what we're all going through is like, ah, you yeah. know. And we have, we have over 100 students watching this today from Performing Arts Studio West. We have students from Meet the Biz. Yay! Yay. And we have the whole internet world out there. Yes. So at this time especially, and, yes. and if we're focused on performers or non-performers, how do we take care of ourselves at this time? Well, first of all, um, I'll tell you how I take care of myself. And I, I always believe it's a decision. We have choice. As much as people go, but I have this addiction or, you know, whatever it is. No, we have, we do have choice. Yeah. You know, and sometimes the choice happens uh, when one doesn't feel good anymore yeah. to a certain level. And so they're up against the wall, so make a choice. But in this time frame, with everything going on, what do we need to create? We need to create a sanctuary for ourselves and to build strength. So I use this whole time period that we're now more, now that we're at home, you know, we're in, you know, in our own, our own environment. I'm up every day by 5.30 in the morning. And um, I do not look at the news. I do not do anything that's in the outer world until I've kind of nourished myself. So I might have a hot cup of tea. I do, I'm a nutritionist, but I just still drink a cup of coffee, but I drink all the good stuff. So I might want to just sit, smell the roses, listen to the birds. Um, I, play, I play some mind games because I'm 69 and I, I want to make sure that my mind's alert. So I play while I'm listening to the birds and this and just kind of greeting my day, I'm also playing some games to trigger my brain, my thinking, mm. synapses, you know, connect those. I take a hot bath and then I'm in yoga. I'm in yoga. I yoga, do yoga and meditate every day before anything from the outside world comes in. And I also make sure the first thing, you know, is something nourishing that's coming into my mouth, coming into my thoughts, coming into my vision, how I'm moving my body. I want to make sure that I am my best before I can begin to talk to anybody else, you know? So it's just like, you know, when you're on a plane, you put the mask on yourself first, right? Take care of yourself first. So it's so important during this time, mentally, like it was like the rug was pulled out from under us everywhere you know initially and we were all like shell-shocked and you know everybody went through a thing and then you go okay all right uh i'm gonna fall apart for a week uh, this is not working i gotta take care of myself i want to take care of myself for the long haul so i'm repairing injuries i've i've had for a long time 
uh, the strength that, so during this time frame home, I am eating exquisitely. I'm doing all of the exercises to mend my body. I'm making sure that I'm taking care. And yeah, is there still a little roller coaster? Yeah, but it's manageable because of taking care of self first. Mm. You know, and that means getting sleep, you know, laughter. You know, that's why I call it body and soul nutrition. You can't separate the mental body, the spiritual body, emotional body, physical body. You wanna you wanna have it all kind of juicy and connected and embraced and all supporting one another. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, I remember, I mean, one of the the main reasons I came to you all those years ago is I had horrific acid reflux and I went to several doctors. I actually you know, they always say, get a second opinion. Well, I grew up and I got four opinions <laughs> and I got two that said, nah, you don't need surgery. And two that said, you got to get surgery. You know, you got to wrap this around this and that. And, and I went, mm, nah, I don't think so. So, and I, I, I felt like I was being choked from the inside. So that's why, you know, thank God a friend of mine said, you've got to meet my friend, Sally. I met you. And you said, okay, this is what you got to do. Soups, 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 healing, healing. And um, within one month, it, it completely healed, or it sure felt like that. And it has never been that bad. It's never. Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. So, yeah. We can reverse so many things. I, and, and I have to qualify it with saying so many things because there's some things that just don't ship, but we can also live with it and navigate with it. It's like I said, I've had a lot of injuries. I was a professional athlete. I mean, from severed Achilles to, I don't know how many times I dislocated my shoulder, torn rotator cut, I mean, tore, tears everywhere. And so right now I couldn't put my, when this whole staying at home happened, I could not put my weight on my one, on one shoulder at arm at all. Now I can. So there's this, like those things we can, with time, with time and persistence and, and consistency and good nourishment and getting in what we need to support ourselves, we can create so many different shifts, yeah. you know, and, and um, again, I, you know, I'm not a physician, so I don't name any diseases and I don't tell people not to take what their doctor told them to take, but you can support Again, what's coming in here, what's coming in here, what's coming in here, how you're moving, you know, all of those things supports the body and can create amazing shifts. Well, I've done meditations where I've done that. Medita yeah. Well, that's been so important too for me is, is to do my meditations. And when mm -hmm. I don't do them, mm -hmm. when I need to do them, it sh I can feel it. I can yes. feel it. Um, what is now I uh, you know I looked at your website which I love and there what is the difference because you're a holistic nutritionist yes. but what's the difference between a nutritionist and a holistic nutritionist so there's a uh, registered dietitians um, uh, those who have gotten a degree from a university that has um, or a master's degree from a university like university you know UCLA or, you know, that have gotten that type of register this. Holistic is a broader term because it takes in other things. I often teach and have brought in to teach for doctors and nutritionists other things that they haven't learned. But now the world is catching up. So it's not the same as 20 years ago when I was teaching this or 15 or even 10 years ago, world's kind of catching up. So holistic means taking the entire person, taking the lifestyle, everything into account. And that often doesn't happen when you go in for an appointment. It's like, check off, check off the ailments you have, da, 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 da. I'm going to look at how does somebody want to feel better? Tell me your habits. Yeah. Tell me your habits. How are you doing? And then we can usually identify where the issue has come from just through the habits you know how are you building your body what are you doing consistently because that's you're getting these you're producing these results because this is what you've been doing for a long whenever time whenever i come see you i mean you you test muscle testing you look in my eyes yes. you, 
you do all yeah, these because things. the eyes are more than just the windows to the soul. You know, when I was an actor, you know, it was windows, you look in the eyes and you get every information you need because yeah. you're reading the other person. At least when I was doing Charles Conrad style acting, that's what we did. You know, you get everything by looking at the other, you know, yeah. all the world is there. Well, Which is this, what we're doing now. I mean, exactly, I could be yes. looking like this, yes. but I'm looking at and the camera. I'd be telling you some other things. But, but, um, but iridology is amazing because... Um, even an ophthalmologist will look at eyes and he can tell if somebody's got um, uh, a heart issue or a blood sugar problem from just looking or circulatory, just looking at the eyes. And I had a, I had an ophthalmologist, very well-known ophthalmologist years ago who was my client, who said, I just am fascinated because you tell me things just by looking at my eyes. And I've proven that to be true, you know, on some of these issues. But the eyes show, I mean, you have more concentrated blood vessels in the eyes. When my kids were little, I could tell the day before they were coming down with something. You see the pupils would start to get really big and really tired. And uh, I just knew that, well, they're going to be fighting off something, you know. And so... Um, Again, it doesn't name disease, but you can see how there are points within the eyes that correspond with different organs and systems in the body. You literally can see as it's tearing down and as you make changes, you can literally see little lines knit together and fill up where something was breaking down. You can see it reverse. Yeah. And it was originally discovered by this um, Hungarian, Ignaz von Peskely. Uh, who, when he was a, he was a child, he had, he was a falconer, you know, most, you know, in the 1800s in Europe and, you know, there was falconry, right? And his falcon or, uh, broke its leg and he saw a line show up in the eye. And he goes, well, that's interesting. And then as the leg mended, he saw these little white lines knit together. Oh, wow. As a leg. So that was his aha moment. Now, with anything in life, if you have a thought or an idea for an invention, usually someplace else, someone's also thinking that thought or that invention. So simultaneously, there was a fellow named Lil's, uh, uh, Lilquist, Niels Lilquist, um, who also was making the same observations looking at his eyes. So he was ended up being the father of homeopathy, and this uh, other fellow, the, the falconer, later had a clinic. And so he would study his patient's eyes, and he would document what, you know, what he was noticing. You know, he would see, okay, this person has this condition. Oh, look how interesting. It's got a dot in this place. Or... I'm having to give this kind of medication. Oh, all of a sudden this rusty brown spot showed up in the eye at right on top of say the liver zone or something. So, oh, that's kind of, they're having a little hard time with, so he, uh, with the liver processing. So he was noticing those things and documenting and Nils Lukas was doing the same thing in Sweden. So you had two different documentations of basically the same kind of thing and it came together. So iridology first, even though some of it's been used in Chinese medicine for, you know, centuries and centuries, it's relatively new in the way the, the particular patterns that I look at that developed from those two, then it went through Germany and England and Canada. And then uh, Dr. Bernard Jensen was my mentor. And he's the one that the charts, you'll see Dr. Bernard Jensen on the bottom. He's the one who's made the most those those particular charts and i studied with him in the 80s mm. and uh when he had a healing center in escondido and it was um and he was he was the one that came up with green inside clean inside and anything that talks about colon cleaning and all of that stuff was all dr jensen uh -huh. so he had this beautiful uh ranch that people would come to with most amazing foods and Okay. So I got to study with him. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Yes. What brings you the most joy in life? <sighs> most joy. Turning people on to themselves. Really. 
like turning people onto themselves, their own, like lighting up the joy in others, lighting up their ahas. I love, that brings me so much joy. Having a person have an aha, you give them a tool and they have an, that aha moment and their life, they have a paradigm shift, whether it's in their ability to manifest, where it's on a creative side, a health side, a uh, wisdom side. Uh, oh, I don't, you know, it's just those, having someone have those ahas. Yeah. And they become self-empowered with that. That I think that brings me the greatest joy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to also say, you uh, it, being around you, I don't. I think that if I hadn't met you, I might not be here today. Oh. And it's not that I am that kind of person to, that would do anything, but I just think that you helped me find the straight and narrow road or I don't think any road is completely straight and narrow but you helped me take care uh, you helped me learn how to take care of myself perfect and that's that's part of that empowering that brings me joy so thank you you just brought me <laughs> joy I, and I need my Sally fix very soon because I need my <laughs> eyes looked at and other <laughs> stuff yeah, well, I, I like to teach people how to take care of themselves. And again, when I say body and the soul nutrition, I have some people that come and just also go, I got a block and I give them a meditation tool and, it, and it, the block may manifest in a physical health way. For instance, say somebody has uh, stomach issues. Yeah. Like, uh, I just, I've always got a stomach ache. I'll go, well, first of all, where is it? Because sometimes when they press stomach, you know, the stomach is, the stomach is here, but they might be talking down here and that's, that's the bowel. That's yeah. the lower reason, or they might go over here or over here, you know, it might be, you know, a different organ. So I, I like to ask where people are experiencing things, you know, and then we go to the food and investigation. Well, if it's stomach area, that's also third chakra. Third chakra, it all deals with, uh, it, it's about your ego in a way, if it's on a lightweight, but it, it's the ability to be who you are with ease out in the world, to be a welcome, to be welcome in this world. You know, and so sometimes um, people have stomach issues because it's also tied up in I, I don't have a rightful place in this world. And they're also reinforcing it with food. So I'm always looking all around every which way to give people the keys to their freedom. Right. In whatever it is. Because it's ultimately up to that individual. Always is. Yeah. It's up to all of us, right? Yeah. I can't fix you. I don't fix. I also don't solicit. I have never solicited. People have come to me. How did I manifest clients years ago? And like when I, when I got divorced and I was, my kids are completely dependent on me, which is around the time I met you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I remember they were this small. Yeah, nine and ten. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. What a gorgeous a family. Little. Thank you, thank you. But during those that time period, I was, I was going. What is it that I do? Because I also like to reduce things to an energy. And I went, I light people up and make them bigger lights. So I literally, you know how I drew clients in? I didn't, I didn't solicit. I didn't do networking. I was lying on my bed meditating, and I'd see these little lights come into my energy field, and I'd fluff them up and make them bigger lights and send them on their way. Literally, that's how my phone rang. I love it. Then, when I had something to say, because I had a lot to say back then, that's why I wrote a book, and yeah. I was a reference. Vibrant, book, vibrant and, living. Yes. And so in that book, um, I was going, I would wake up some days, and I'm going, I really have something to share. And I literally broadcast my energy around clockwise and counterclockwise, you know, it was all this kind of meditative. I, I swear to God, 
I would get a call for a radio station, a magazine, or a book, reference in a book within 24 hours. Hmm. So meditation is very powerful, holding your space, knowing kind of, you know, learning who you are, learning who one, you know, who you are, you know, somebody's got some, uh, because we're all, I think we're all just unique, beautiful gifts. You know, we all have something so wonderful to share, you know, uh, every single person. And if you're, if you're in your joy and in your self ownership and your self leadership, you're in all of that, there's, everything's going to line up. I can't tell you about the timing, but it always lines up. It always will come if someone stays with it. I remember my daughter, she's been on your thing, you know, and, uh, you know, I, and I would say, hey, if you stick with anything 10 years, it's all going to come in. Just stick with it. It's going to come. And for her, it was. It was like rough, 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 and then boom, overnight success. But it wasn't. It was all of those 10 years. Yeah. It was when she could receive, really receive and get the other things out of the way where it just blew up, you know? Well, and I also see, I see so much of you and her and your son, because you're all so, you're all so vibrant. <laughs> you're all so, you know, the, back to the book, but at the same time, you have this energy that is contagious. And I think that's why you are such an amazing healer and I use that word healer because your energy, you teach us how to find, again, you teach us how to find our own energy. And if we sway a little on oh, my addiction of sugar, I like, okay, well, that's it. You know, maybe, maybe once in a blue moon, but. Well, the pendulum swings. If you're doing this, you better balance it out over here. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Yeah. That's, you know, everybody's got something that, you know, something that they do. So if I'm going to have, um, if I'm going to have a glass of wine or two glasses of wine, I'm going to make sure that I've had a green juice that day and a bunch of water to flush, you know, to flush. I need to make sure that I'm counteracting, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever it is that I'm doing, you know, like I know that. Uh, do I ever eat bread? Well, once in a blue moon, I do eat bread. I try, you know, you know, I always want to have the best quality. So I'm probably going to be eating Ezekiel toast, which is more cardboardy, but it's full, you know, it's a full out great kind of bread quality. Will I eat another one? Yes. And I know if I eat too much, I'm going to have a stuffy nose or, and they have bags under my eyes because that's how it affects me. Yeah. You know, and so I'm not going to do too much. So if you become aware, what do these different things do to you? How do they make you feel better? What doesn't, you know, you just, it's an awareness. It's an attunement of finding, you know, what works and doesn't work. And it's know? about, it's, it's about whether it's taking care of your health or you as a person, because yeah. it, it, like you said at the beginning, we have the choice and we have the choice to choose love or something negative. And or fear. Love or fear. Right? Love and or fear. Hey, I, I, you know, love, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the, You're Mr. Love Bug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, Talk about contagious joy. That's you. Oh. You know. <laughs> um. Uh, well, another one more question. What do you want the most at this moment in your life? Peace. Well, it didn't take too much to say that. Peace. Peace. Peace of mind. Peace of heart. Peace. I am so grateful for everything. I want to have a peaceful sleep. I want peace in my movement in my body so there's no strain. I want peace in my digestion. I want peace in my head. I want peace in my heart. I want peace radiating around in the world in me. You know, so really it is peace, serenity, you know, ease. You know, I have ease, but I think it's really about peace. I just like, and I'd like everyone to find peace. Yeah. You know, I really, 
I would really like that there's, there's so much harshness that's going on. So I just, that's why just peace is what came. Because I am joy. I know, you know, joy is there. I know enthusiasm. I know, you know, all of those there. But what, what is sometimes not always there is peace. And that might be in a, in a sleep at night. You know, I might go be dreaming about what's going on somewhere, you know, and I don't, so I want peace everywhere, peace mm. of mind, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think, I don't know, what else is there besides, and we know love, I've got love, got gratitude, yeah. got joy, got self-ownership, you know, can certainly speak up. You know, there's a lot like there's there's not like this heavy learning. It's you know, I'm pushing 70 now, so there's not like this heavy learning curve I gotta do. Yeah. It's just a more for me it's always been about um how can I erase the blackboard of things that happen, like not be at the mercy of it, that I can really be all of me and every cell vibe in my hair, each hair strand. How can I just be a reflection of all of me radiating with joy and peace and love and gratitude and all of that, you know, and wisdom. Well, thank you for your wisdom and for your healings and yeah, for you. Thank you for you. Oh, and you're you're gifted. Gifted. What, what? You're you're a gift. Thank you. You are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>